thank you for, for this film, for proposing this film. It's a um, different proposal than the one you made last year. Um, but I think I agree with you when you propose this. I agree with, with you that um, it's a very significant work right now, even if it was done in 2019. I think everyone can see that um, nowadays and today uh, it's it has this um, new um, meaning, new significance, because we are already living this collective mourning, this collective dwell that we are uh, living today, uh, or that we are more perhaps more conscious of that uh, death is um, something social shared and that we can think about and feel about uh, together. So after all these two days of uh, talks, this spectrality issue have been uh, all the time floating on the talks but also the issue of care has been brought um, many times these two days. Um, I was thinking while seeing again the film on this last version, because this is not the last, last version of the film, I know it's not still the end, but it's um, a, a different version than the one I saw some weeks ago. And um, I was thinking a lot about this care of the body, like the... I, I'm starting for the end of the notes that I have um, to taken. Um, so we have been already talking. I, uh, some days ago, I took many notes. I have been writing again in the darkness, and I'm starting from the last, last words about this idea of the, um, I don't know how it's in English, consuelo, no? How would you say consuelo? Relief. Sorry? Relief. Relief, yes, it's very different word. <laughs> but in, in French, this um, unconsolable uh, fact of the desconsuelo, no? The uh, unrelief or the, the thing that you cannot relieve from pain. Um, and I think this is a very powerful issue here, no? like the uh, caring amongst the bodies related uh, amongst the materiality of the bodies, I mean, uh, um, like um, a body that is dying or that is almost dead and how you care about this materiality of this physicality of the body, no? But we are all the time dying at the same time, I mean, <laughs> as, Virginia Woolf, uh, as Virginia Woolf says, no, like... Uh, how to live knowing that one is dying all the time. So this caring of the bodies that are dying, and that would include anybody, uh, somehow it's about um, uh, this haptic relation, no? this touch and this um, clothing that is so present here, like the clothing, the unclothing, the um, the surface of the skin, the, um, hmm, the holding that also has appeared in some previous talks, the sustaining of the other of the, of the other's body, and I've been thinking about this, no? and also about um, these temporalities, these uh, different temporalities in the bodies, like the different temporalities, as uh, Pablo was saying in his work in his uh, presentation, in his text, about this idea of um, a symptom as um, something that could be translated as um, falling together, falling together into something. I was thinking about this, one of the last letters that's talking about, you know, uh, this romantic idea of dying together, which is, of course, it's a romantic idea, but at the same time, it's very comprehensible, no? Like... Um, how to live together and how to die together at the same time. So I was thinking on that, like falling together or uh, this 
temporalities which is so present in the in the title itself heterochronies which uh, it appears in the text by Michel Foucault um, heterotopias no uh, this known as heterotopias which is los contraespacios o lugares reales fuera de, fuera de todo lugar and this idea of heterotopy and uh, this idea of heterochrony uh, go together. Like uh, he also talks in his uh, conference about the cemeteries and about how the cemeteries before were like in the center of the city. So that was like, part of a social uh, engagement. Mm, so there was a conviviality of death and life. But it's time that cemeteries went uh, more outside the city. So the death becomes invisible. And no, I think this pandemic brought us back, not only the pandemic, of course, also the global crisis, migration and, and violent and so on. But um, somehow this, all this is present here uh, very much. So just to contextualize, con contextualize a bit before um, leaving instead to talk, I just would say that this work uh, it's one of the series of the monument series that you are, is yours? That's from, you, you hear it every day from last year? <laughs> Um, no, I was saying that this work is part of a um, series of work that Esther is doing um, since um, many years, which are called monuments. And we had the opportunity of seeing, of watching one of her monuments, also called Mothers, M barra Others, uh, that is done with her, her mother, but it's also a, appealing or uh, questioning or you know putting into physicality this issue of mothering and of also caring. Uh, some of the gestures there appear again here. Both pieces were done, were created more or less, no? At the same period, 2019, 2020, that's in that intersection. It's, it's very nice how they have something in relation. Of course, all the monuments have something in relation, but these monuments um, could be like a, a way of, uh, you know, uh, appealing to the historical uh, gestures that install as um, dogmatic ways of relating with history and with the bodies in history. And this is one more monument. So um, where to start? I would, I would start uh, after saying this by uh, Vincent Despre, because uh, Vincent Despre uh, this writer, philosopher, that also in Rita's talk appeared, when Rita's and uh, Julia's talk appeared. She has this book called Au Bonheur du Mort, which is, uh, I don't know how to translate it in, in English, uh, but, uh, but in Spanish it would be something like uh, Para la Alegría de los Muertos, no? Para la Felicidad de los Muertos, in which, uh, in, this, in this book, she talks, um, she recalls recalls, um, gathers many experiences of other people dealing with a uh, duel, with mourning, and um, she says this very simple thing, but very, um, yeah, that is, um, what do the death make us do? Like something like, the, the, how do we act, guided somehow by a force when someone is dead, when someone close to us is dead? And how that presence can be um, that presence, that kind of presence in, in the absence, that is only possible when this person is not there anymore. But it's like a kind of force that makes you think, makes you do things, no? like sometimes things that you don't understand, sometimes things that a kind of rituality of dwell. So this rituality, these rituals of dwell, the rituals of mourning, are somehow very present along the history of human being uh, relating, no? relating this life and death through gestures, through very specific gestures, 
like uh, producing you know, incomprehensible ways of dealing with this um, unconsolable state. So I leave it here to see what you can say. <laughs> to start, maybe I can start, yeah, from the title, heterochrony or heterochronicity. Um. Hello. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes, I was, I was very inspired by this um, conference by Foucault and, and, and um, about heterotopias and also the somehow the body and the skeleton and and uh, what is the utopian body that might be maybe the, the skeleton. And um, I have, yeah, this, this idea of heterochronicity, like heterotopias, what are the other times? Um, or not necessarily the, like the utopian time, but somehow multiplicity of times, how we are living and we can, uh, in, I mean, understand how we, how we exist, how we coexist in different temporalities, in different presences, or or different pasts and different futures. Um, so, as a choreographer and dancer, I have I have worked quite a lot since I don't know 20 years to understand movement, how movement is happening in duration, through memory, and not in the you know in just this exact moment and from A to B. So. In, in general, I'm, I'm busy with these thoughts, and then <clears throat> um, and, and, and this is somehow not the first time I'm, I'm working on or, or creating something that one could maybe put in the, you know, in the big, um, big territory uh, of the genre of a danse macabre or a dance of the, the death, which, which is something comes from theater from the Middle Ages and, and kind of uh, was present in dance, in in uh, painting, in photography, in cinema, in music, classical music, and also uh, all kinds, other kinds of more contemporary music. Um, so something, yeah, between the heterochronicity, uh, because and also this dance of the death. I was quite interested for many years on, of, on questioning presence, like how not necessarily continuing, you know, putting the value on the presence as the basis of performance, because people like to go to theater to see bodies. Of course, this is a certain kind of confirmation of we are living, you know, we are sharing something, we have bodies, et cetera, et cetera, and we know we will die. So, uh, so I was always, um, for many, years, yes, so used kind of, you know, lip syncing or, or presences on video and on stage, like somehow just breaking with some, and also slowness or temporal elongation. So kind of stretch a little bit this question of the presence. And then this time, I mean, hard to say, maybe I have to start also or continue with an anecdote, like this, this this piece kind of was born for, from an encounter I had uh, with, the, with the mummies in the catacomb of Palermo in 2015, and it was, it was a kind of ac yeah, accidental encounter because I was there for one month to work on a completely different work with two elderly performers from New York, so it was nothing to do with, with Palermo even itself, and when I visited this place, I had a quite uh, big shock, uh, aesthetic and I don't know spiritual or physical shock, and and then the some yeah something remained with me and um, and uh, I spent a lot of time there and um, and 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 I don't they got in under my skin no or I, I um, so. Yes, after some years, when I, when I thought, ah, oh, maybe this is the time to, <laughs> to go back to this, um, to this, 
yeah, que questioning again in other way, maybe the, these regions between stillness, which I have worked a lot already, and, and slowness or moving. And, um, and remembering how much I had this um, alienation and extreme um, feeling of familiarity when I visited the, the, yeah, the catacombs and the mummies, like something, yeah, very, very, very close, and of course a, a big distance or kind of horror, you know, in the cold. But at, at the same time, a very, very, um, yes. The, the, the feeling of contemporaneity, though these mummies were maybe from the, uh, I think the youngest were from the beginning of the 20th century, and the oldest, eldest were from the end of 16th century. So, yeah, I was thinking about this theater, or the catacomb itself was, I don't go inside because back then, of course, it reflects the whole society and uh, and the hierarchy of, yeah, from the Pope till the child, which is the, the genre of the Danse Macabre. Um, this is what the performers whisper at the end of this work, you know, that we are, we, yeah, we are equal in death, but not in, in facing death. Like, we know this during the pandemic, the COVID, you know, how we are not at all <laughs> equal. And, um, well, voilà, so so these were kind of the inspiration, and I uh, I came uh, upon uh, or I met yes this uh, book by Vincent Depré, and I was inter interested, of course, beside my own experience with uh, with uh, people I lost or um, on this possible communication, possible um, connection. What what happens if one doesn't cut the relation? And also from Foucault, yes, what does it mean if yeah, if the cemeteries are not completely outside and we are not hiding the deceased, but um, but is kind of uh, another coexistence. And then I was thinking, of course, how um, how I could um, yes invite dancers and uh, propose them to work with with something that I'm also doing for for a very long time now, which is uh, working on voice and mo yeah, using voice and movement at the same time and um, and so I don't know you you you, you started uh, also this like we premiered this work and then and then three Months later, I think, I mean, there was lockdown uh, basically everywhere in Europe and elsewhere. And, uh, and when we could, re when, when this um, uh, video is now in process of uh, being finished, um, so in March, end of March, we could film it in Paris. And, uh, and of course, uh, so more, uh, more, yeah, after more than a year of, I don't know, suspension or disappearance or not being able to perform. Yes, I understand, or I don't know, I was thinking of how, I mean, how much the work, the, the influence or the initiation or this encounter, you know, happened in Palermo and the catacombs. But of course there are catacombs in many, many other places. And, um, and I was thinking of, yes, how do we, how do we face differently maybe the, the the, the proximity uh, with with death and also yes many other th things um, appear like how much you know the Mediterranean Sea uh, around you know Sicily is a, 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 an actual or a new uh, cemetery like how so other things uh, you know started to to be present that maybe we're not that much before. And um, and yes, the work with the, the dancers was mm -hmm. something very much starting from sensation mm -hmm. and reaching um, different kind, through with different fictionalization, mm -hmm. different states and, um, and working a lot with the breath. Mm -hmm. 
instead of working a lot with images or with uh, mm -hmm. outside references. So, mm -hmm. yeah. We were, uh, along these days, we were talking about fugitive images and about, you know, these images that escape from the capture of, of, of the tale of history of the um, dominant uh, narratives. And somehow um, you have worked uh, for a long time in different pieces with the slowness, with slow motion. Um, but you said this is the longest piece you have maintained the slow motion in the bodies. And I was thinking also about the fact of working as a, in a kind of microcellular scale. No? Also, we, during these days, have been talking about the scale and rescaling and the fact of by rescaling our gaze on the things, how can we also find like other uh, like holes uh, that let us pass through other kind of experiences in time and space. And I was thinking about this idea of slowness, this, this work with the slowness, this physical work that you were talking about right now, about how to work from sensation to, uh, to image, from sensation to image through, through a body experience, through a kinetic, because I can understand that this encounter of you in 2015 with the catacombs of the Capuchins in Palermo um, somehow impacted you physically, and you were like preserving that impact until you are able to, to face it as a, as a work with bodies through this encounter with this workshop that started this work. And somehow this kinesthetic experience of horror and empathy also with the bodies somehow uh, connects, I think, with these fugitive images we have been talking about as um, a fugitive um, in, uh, an impact that, that remains in your body, but somehow it's not easy to catch. It's not easy to fix. It's not easy. It's still acting. It's like someone, some, somehow, is still uh, producing something. So um, this slow motion can um, be a way also of making like a, a zooming, zooming into some kind of um, grade of this experience, of a graduation of this experience. Coming back to the heterotopias of uh, Foucault. Eh, claro, eh, voy a leer un fragmentito que tenía subrayado, que dice, hasta el siglo XVIII el cementerio estaba en el corazón de los poblados. So cemetery was in the heart of, in the core of the villages. Dispuesto allí en el centro de la ciudad, justo a un lado de la iglesia, y no se le atribuía ningún valor solemne. Pusimos, más abajo dice, pusimos eh, todos esos esqueletos, you were talking about the skeletons, eh, todas esas cajitas, todos esos féretros, todas esas tumbas y esas piedras fuera de la ciudad, como si tra se tratara de alguna manera del contagio de la muerte, ¿no? Uh, this uh, fear of the, this contagious of being dead, you know, like as if death was a contagious uh, thing per se. And um, so this, this fear... Uh, it also produces another kind of physicality, of corporeality, of, re, uh, of, um, yeah, of uh, empathy or disempathy. And, uh, um, yeah. Re ah, gracias. <laughs> Relating this with the duration, for example, no? So if um, somehow uh, these heterotopias are places that are, that are dismissed, so places that are dismissed, which are the times that are dismissed? Which, dismissed? We could think on Bersonian duration, actually, no? like uh, these times that um, are producing themselves um, by, by doing it, not by staying in it, no? but not by measuring it, not by controlling it, not by um, cutting it in pieces, in uh, talking about dance, not by cutting it in, in, in steps, but by some kind of a continuity that is a continuity that connects different layers and different levels. Um, so uh, somehow this is the longest piece uh, of uh, of uh, slow motion. And I, while I was, I, I took some notes in relation to temporality, because I also was thinking I I will, I will almost fall asleep. And I, I thought, like, is this because it's afternoon and I just uh, ate a while ago? Or is it because of the sound or is it because of the darkness? 
or is because there is some kind of tone that it gives me like not not sleepy but almost like with the eyes a little bit closed like when you are in Edward Mevela so I was thinking in a means proposal for Centro Centro in Madrid like by listening while sleeping no? so these bodies are not death are not life are almost like a sleeping some kind of collective dream that um, like they are speaking no? like voices that are that you can hear and you don't know if so all this like um, imaginary is there, I think, acting somehow. But um, as a kind of, yeah, a spectrality, that it produces a physicality that is very close to, yes, dance macabre, but also pathetism, no? And I was thinking about also Kasu Ono and Wiley's hold by Tatsumi Hijikata, no? And his, his body and his uh, face is very similar to one of the images that we can see here with this figure, which is the, te the technician actually, no? Which is, who is the one that is like um, taking care of these bodies. So maybe you could uh, speak a little bit more about the training or the warming up and then, because also these bodies, I was thinking, how do they, how do they train to be on that state? But at the same time, I was thinking like, how do they, uh, what do they do afterwards? Because after, I mean, the piece is longer than the film. So afterwards, it's like they must, if we as a spectator are impacted or just by seeing the images, how, what happens in their bodies, no? While doing this, it's not just a piece, but it's also a very specific experience of time, uh, muscles, you know, all the, um, the tension, the attention in, and the tension. So these layers are there. Uh, can, can you let us know like something regarding this work with the bodies? How do you? Yes, it's quite complex, so let's say layered, and how we arrived there, of course, I didn't have the master plan. Uh, I mean, we worked um, uh, from the beginning, uh, yes, with uh, lots of breathing and lots of um, internal um, imagination, so working with the, the, you know, our bone structures, but also the skin, um, organs. So something concrete that we know that we have, that we can feel, and or, or we open an anatomical book and we kind of can place, or that we can really feel bones, and um, not all of them, we have like 232, but also skin we can feel. So we, I, I asked, or I proposed the performers to, they have very different background, you know, from ballet to, to, to rather acting or, yeah. Uh, so uh, one of them was actually before becoming a performer, um, a nurse, um, which is very interesting. And uh, so it was important for me to, to not to alienate them and not to try to ask them to, you know, to get outside of them and then to, I don't know, to, to, to reproduce, to mime, to, to arrive at a certain image. So we didn't work with images at all. So when, what you call maybe images, I would call intensities. So how one could uh, train uh, sensation, action, and perception of one's own body in order to, to be able to play on, 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 the, on different scales of intensities. Um, we, from the beginning, included the face in the in moving. So, as we have the the skin on the face as well, it's this is maybe the easiest. But we have also bones. So you know there are all those structures that helps to not to cut um, the head in dance, which I come from ballet. So this is what what mainly happens. Um, so there, there was this idea of, of um, um, yeah, movement can happen anywhere. And, uh, and the second, uh, so this, this is how we started. And after, I don't know, two weeks, um, we had a vocal coach, a first vocal coach who, who have also, because uh, who, who was an opera singer from Berlin and who, who had all kinds of uh, yeah, accidents and developed ways of uh, teaching actually non-professional singers uh, to find a, 
So the idea was to find the acous acousmatic body, so the sounding body. So how can we tend towards moving and sounding body where, if possible, one, uh, how one action could sustain the other, you know, and vice versa. So how breathing could help the slowing down. I don't call it slow motion because slow motion is something else. Slow motion is something from A to B. You have a pass, like in music, you record something and then you, you stretch it out. So this is not what they do. Otherwise, it's very, very difficult. So it's really a potentialization of movement and, uh, and a kind of ongoing figuring out where it goes, even if there is a kind of meta path and they know that from the backstage they will progress to front stage and, and that things will happen and they will find themselves on the floor, for example. So it's a kind of, um, yes, so things need to be kind of oblique and curvy and not direct, uh, how are our bones and, and bodies actually. So, um, so take out actually any line linearity of course, with singing, it's, it's a bit different, but also uh, that was all this idea of to, yeah, to really use the breath as, a, as an engine, as, a, as an energy to be able to, to sing and, and to sing with the voice that they were able to produce and they could, of course, get better. So what they are concentrating on is, is, is really multiple. There is a whole 12 minutes at the beginning that is not now in this film because it's almost completely in the dark that there is a choir, is, is one song, a folk song from the Middle Ages that we kind of, we use a lot this, um, this heterophony, so when everybody is singing a song but it's very slow and, and everybody is somewhere else. So there is, it's the opposite maybe of unisono. So it's a, some kind of uh, soundscape that is, is created through a kind of zooming in. So it's not there. So they have to, be very, very attentive to their own energy and um, and tech, tech body technology they have developed at, at the same time. Of course, they have to listen a lot. So we, they have practiced the way of singing where actually listening is as important as singing or even more in order to be able to collaborate and to sing together, as they, this was not their primary, you know, back, background or practice. So this is an ongoing um, work and presence and articulation um, they go through and then we have some kind of collective score and some, but that they can use, there is nothing uh, to there is not one image or one point where they have to arrive, you know, so it's, um, I don't know, it's a kind of going like this uh, uh, idea how they can serve the energy and, uh, and of course, and they have their own individual fiction. Some of them work with, I don't know, from the beginning like temperature or with a certain kinds of landscape that is a maybe half real landscape and the fictional landscape because they can slow them da down and it gives them comfort. You see, so there is the work, there is the attention, and there is also how to, how to find pleasure even in, and joy in, the, in that work. And, uh, and then the faces, of course, there is expression or the other, le other what we, as we recognize, as we see a lot of faces, or um, we catch the, the signs. Of course, we're, when um, this is something was we didn't mime the pho photographs, for example, of the of, of of mummies from the catacombs in Palermo or other from other mummies. But with what we could see that the ex extreme, um, so different scale on, on, on being, um, how you say, uh, um, uh, the deformation or transformation of the face. And that was another game, like how much one can defacialize oneself or how, how one can uh, 
just also lose uh, one's face um, at this from this holding on as a you know as a dancer as a performer um, and um, and how sometimes it's collectively yeah imagine different kind of rictus you know which is much maybe more a smile or something so for this we got some inspiration but not never like something we have to do like that because you cannot do a draw that is completely you know undone it's not possible so so we played with this impossibility actually and this non-correspondence but some kind of um yeah, some kind of territory of, of ex expressivity and, and, and sensation, more than a, a code, you know, or an image. Coming back to the preservation of the bodies, you have already worked in a previous um, work, Tales of the Bodiless, in 2011, with the bog bodies. Um, and this is related with uh, mummies, no? with um, mummification. So both are um, procedures for kind of preserving, stop, like kind of suspending um, the bodies into a temporality in which it seems like, you know, um, yes, yeah, something is preserved as, 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 as in a capsule, as in a kind of, you know, but, but surrounded by materialities, um, no, the liquids in the bog bodies, but also the, and the, what, is cons what is preserved is very different things in one and the other procedure. So maybe you could talk a little bit about your interest in both. And in this case of heterochrony, um, what does it give you back this process in relation with the skeletons and with the, I mean, uh, in, in material terms of working with bones? Um, maybe you could just um, share with us a little bit your reflections with these two modes of preservation. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe just a little bit of context. So that Tales of the Bodiless was a piece I made in 2011, and it's a kind of science fiction opera, or let's say an opera without, or, or fiction without science. So it's in four, four parts, four stories. The one is the bog body, so, and it's, it's, um, it's an imitation. I, I work with two composers, and uh, uh, Cedric Dombrem and Terry Tamlitz, and, and, and Cedric Dombrem may, I mean, it's, it's like 20 minutes. Basically, it's an invitation to, to slow down, to, to sink down, and to imagine the process of, of a certain decay which is happening in, in certain eco ecosystems when there uh, or uh, yeah in bogs um, where there is not enough um, oxygen and how actually is the opposite when so 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 it's it's actually the soft tissues that remain the skin and the organs and um, and and the uh, and the skeleton the bones dissolves so it was a proposal to, yes, for the spectators to, yeah, to imagine, to, to, to follow this story told by one voice, one male voice, and some sound to, to become the landscape or to, yes, to become part of this um, ecosystem and become yeah, somehow to you know to 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 imagine a, a not negative or a, a dystopian you know trajectory of death, but something that can be actually imagined almost as a yeah as a kind of some kind of extension, but not not through the spirit, but actually through the body and the materiality of. Yeah, in the environment, and um, and then in this, yeah, with this work, 
Uh, I mean, we didn't really only work with the bones. You know, we worked with the entire. We worked a lot also with the with the organs, of course, with the singing and um, and as I said, the skin and all different st structures that help to to slow down and not to be in the slowness as a negative project, but in a pro positive um, work or project of, of micro movements and how different yeah, structures in the body actually can uh, sustain um, for long. For some, you asked just before, I think uh, for all of the, each of the performers, I, I think it's quite different uh, trajectory as, as, I, as I hear from them. Some can completely go in, but it means it's so, they can be so eff much affected that, you know, in the hotel room at night, they have to kind of do another ritual to kind of get out of something in which they put themselves in. And others can, you know, smoke after and have a beer or, you know, do their way of how they perform in general. So there is, I would say, it's, yeah, it's, it's not, there is no one way of, of doing it um, or, or, or relating to it. And uh, what I know and what they said that I think since we started again, I mean, we only performed it twice, I think what happened to them, to their families, yeah, it seems it affected them much more. Like something became more than the chore choreography or this piece, but yes, something like, yeah, some come from, yeah, Central or South America, and you know, I mean, things had happened, you know, it was, it was always there, like the daily, struggle and the fear for families and you know the so this was um this was present and probably we are going to perform it next week in vienna i suppose it will be probably still the case maybe differently so um, in a certain way yes i i think the the book bodies you know it was a kind of far-fetched idea though though very concretely it exists, there, no, there exist these eco systems where bodies, book bodies are, are preserved for th thousands of years. And this time, yeah, it, it, this reality of, of uh, COVID and uh, this global situation, yeah, it, yes, it, 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 it got another unforeseeable, I don't know, um, relation. And what I got, uh, I don't know, you had another last question, but I, <laughs> you are I don't remember. Are you tired? Thank you for, um, <laughs> yes, I have some, some questions, but I just want to leave uh, the micro open. So just if, if someone wants to say something or comment, we will also have some time to um, smaller groups or smaller conversations uh, when we go out to the terrace, but if someone wants to share something aloud. Si alguien quiere comentar, eh, perdón. Decía que si, al, si alguien... Yo tengo como una última cuestión, pero eh, Esther está un poco cansada. Okay. Entonces, si... So you just, it's, it's fine, I mean. You've just finished. You finished? You, it's fine with continuing or, or it's fine? It's fine with continuing. I mean, I'm here on, okay. on purpose, so please feel free. <laughs> I, might, I might be not very... Maybe it's also interesting, you know, what you can say and not me. Mm -hmm. Bueno, pues eso. Si alguien le apetece comentar algo. Eh, espera, está primero este chico y luego tú, ¿vale? Hola, eh, voy a hablar en castellano porque me sale mejor. Este, nada, muchas gracias. Eh, hubo momentos que me, yo me, me quedaba un poco dormido, pero era porque estoy un poco cansado, no por otra cosa. Eh, me, mientras veía la película, me, eh, se me vino a la mente algo eh, eh, del diario de Komorobushi, que me, lo, me puse a buscar ahora y lo encontré, y es algo que quería compartir porque me parece que tiene todo el sentido con la película. Y dice así, dice, On the boundary, a crisis dance. 
touching death but not dying, touching life but not dancing, without being made to dance, being made to dance, dancing a danceless dance. No sé si lo leí bien o si se entendió bien. Eh, ¿Puedes repetir el contexto del diario? Sí. Es un contexto sobre de Korumo, del sensei Komorobushi eh, acerca de, de la danza. Entonces, mientras lo veía, me hizo pensar en eso y me puse a buscar la obra. Y nada, me parece que… Bueno, anoté un montón de cosas respecto a esto que, que me gustó muchísimo el cuerpo informe, eh, no sé cómo se debería tradu traducido en inglés. Tranquilo, porque le están traduciendo en directo. Ah, ok, ok. Eh, la corporalidad del informe, que me, me pareció algo eh, súper importante respecto a cómo a veces las imágenes las tratamos como de capturar y en realidad eh, son incapturables. Hay algo que está sucediendo y en ese suceder el cuerpo está siendo atravesado y me parecía súper, eh, en realidad, la corporalidad de todas las... Eh, las personas que, de todos los cuerpos, cómo se iban eh, disolviendo, cómo se iban traspasando, cómo estaban, eh, sobre todo con esto, ¿no? como tocando la muerte, pero no muriendo, tocando la danza, pero no bailando. Y ese lugar entre me parecía de una potencia eh, sutil, súper sensible, como de otros canales, como nada, lo disfruté un montón en realidad. Eh, y nada, gracias. Muchas gracias a ti. Aquí hay una pregunta también. Pero espera, if you want to comment something or No, thank you very much for your remark and thoughts. Además es una I reflexión eh, que aporta, o sea que eh, esta cuestión, ¿no? de la de la corporalidad del, del informe, creo que podríamos como aplicarla a muchas de las cosas que se han estado hablando. Gracias. Eh, a ver, yo, sí, un comentario más o menos porque, eh, bueno, gracias por la película, ha sido maravillosa, la verdad, la experiencia muy, muy contagiosa en parte, bueno, yo viéndola desde aquí, había un momento que casi había un proceso de mímesis y estaba como a punto de, de situarme en la misma tesitura corporal o algo así. Y me he estado preguntando, eh, por un lado, eh, acerca de, del, me he preguntando acerca de los, del espacio, acerca de la luz. Eh, he pensado en, en la cuestión del, del, del en el patetismo, en el patetismo también como, como iconografía, que es verdad que, que has comentado que no has trabajado desde las imágenes, pero en un modo casi como de supervivencia, barbur las imágenes han, han volado hacia allí, ¿no? Y estaba el Cristo yacente eh, y había como todo ese dolor que surgía eh, del, del, de los, del tic, de los gestos eh, congelados de, ¿no? de esa, y de, esa, de ese ralentí, de, de llevarlo a, a un lugar muy curioso donde precisamente eh, hace emerger la diferencia, ¿no? Porque yo creo que también ese trabajo grupal eh, invis no invisibiliza, pero eh, permite que uno no vea todos los gestos al mismo tiempo y entonces cuando retoma algún cuerpo, algún rostro, lo retoma en un lugar diferente y, y precisamente se genera una, una animación en el sentido del movimiento. ¿no? Hay un movimiento basado en, en el casi como como lo que hablaba Goethe cuando miraba el Laoconte y decía que le parecía que si parpadeaba, pues casi como un precine, un momento anterior al cine, y algo así me parecía que ocurría aquí también con, con esa luz que va generando planos diferentes, que hay un momento como del plano medio, pero luego ya se abre al suelo y entonces van apareciendo los... Y esto acompañado también de, de un texto que que a veces es como descriptivo, eh, indicando, ahí tienes el fuego, ahí tienes la puerta, ahí está el vino, el pan, y parece que está hablando de, de un espacio que se les privó o algo así, se, se, que, 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 que está en otro lugar ¿no? y que, que ellos no pueden acceder. Y me preguntaba también si... De hecho, me resultaba tan dolorosa la, la forma... De, o sea, eh, eh, hay algo muy desesperanzador 
en la contemplación de, de esos cuerpos, en el sentido que pensaba que el único momento de... de bueno, había una memoria congelada en, en, en esa violencia del ralentí, de la lentitud, pero el único momento de aparición de, lo, de, lo memori, de la memoria, del recuerdo, era esa voz que canta, ¿no? y que aparece de repente, incluso a veces, como si fuera un brote, un emerger, y que cuando has dicho que ellos, ellos tenían que articularse conjuntamente para poder cantar, que era un trabajo interesante de escucha, me parecía que al mismo tiempo que era una memoria y al mismo tiempo un estar en el presente como un aquí y ahora muy fuerte, ¿no? como una conexión entre ellos muy fuerte. No sé, no es una pregunta lo que era más un comentario, pero sí que me ha resultado muy desgarrador. Solo parecía haber esperanza cuando cantaban o algo así. En el momento de la música surgía como un atisbo de vida pasada o de, o de, o de presencia o quizás emoción o de, o de posibilidad o esperanza ¿no? o luz. Y luego volvían a esa situación eh, donde sí que parecía que se querían dar cuidados cuando el, el Cristo yacente está en el suelo y, y parece que pero sí resultaba muy, muy, muy desolador también un poco la, la, la visión. Y nada más quería decir. Pero muchas gracias, ha sido muy... Thank you. Gracias. Bueno, muchas gracias por compartir... La película ha sido impresionante y además ha sido más impresionante ver ahora que el sentimiento que yo he tenido al verla, ¿no? O sea, ha activado mi cuerpo más que cualquier otra cosa que hemos hecho porque yo me iba a caer de la silla en algún momento de lo a gusto que estaba viéndola, ¿no? Y de sentirme como, como esos cuerpos. Pero yo tengo una pregunta concreta sobre el trabajo textual, sobre la procedencia de los textos. Tengo mucha curiosidad por saber sobre ellos. Thank you for your question. Um, so the text. Uh, oh, okay. There is some kind of feedback, uh, like if I was in a swimming pool, you know. And um, uh, so there was, yeah, you know, it was it was not easy. So uh, when we created the end of uh, it was December 2019, the piece, mm, I knew that. I, I needed to give some context. And then there was some text um, given about the catacombs, about uh, this mummification process, etc., etc. And this was projected, you know. And then, and, and then the, 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 you know, the premiere was um, gone, and the next day I, I knew that it, this was wrong, you know, this was all this. So then I had time for a year or more because of we couldn't perform the piece, and then I had this strong desire to to create something that is not imposing itself like a frame, like a explanation, because I had the feeling that this complex work we've done with the dancers at the end of the day somehow, you know, it was representational through, through the use of, you know, that uh, text, which was time, time to time appearing and people could read. So I was thinking about uh, what, what, the, what the, how the text could be another thread um, in the piece, beside sound, voice, and moving, and light, and costume, and all that. And then I, uh, I, I thought back of this book by Vinci and Depré, and And, uh, and not uh, particularly like exact, you know, to the exact um, stories that, uh, or in interviews with people who, who, who tell about their, their relationship uh, with the deceased, you know, the, the people who were already dead. But somehow I thought um, also with this uh, very um, situation where suddenly, um, because of the COVID and what happened, like how people could not, you know, be present at the funerals, 
not, not be able to be, go to the hospital, not be able to say goodbye, not be able to... So this was somehow something, one thing that became just every day was somehow present. And um, I, w I wanted to somehow integrate in the piece I, um, and and also that probably this was also the case actually in the past and it's the case for many people. So when I was thinking about how the, you know, the Mediterranean Sea is a cemetery, like how much for the North African families, you know, who lose their um, youngs uh, or family members in the Mediterranean, you know, and they are, can hope maybe the body get back to them, but most of the time, no. So what is this um, imp impossibility, that this, this pain of not finding or not being with, not being able to accompany, um, so some kind of communion, and, and then of course there's all kinds of cultural rituals no, that um, help uh, living, the livings to, to continue to live. Uh, their lives and um, and 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 find some kind of resilience and find et, et cetera. And then those so these rituals, you know, being uh, cut or or made uh, impossible or this was something one one I was I was kind of uh, try to reflect on and on this idea of like how mm, this piece in a certain way with this heterochronicity, also through the songs that were the, the, the Sicilian or South um, Italian uh, songs uh, re ranging from kind of, from really the 13th, 12th, 13th century, maybe till the beginning of 20th century, uh, some kind of uh, historical, um, a large historical, um, Um, continuum, I don't know how to say it, uh, where sometimes songs, of course, developed into being integrated into operas, for example. Like there is one song which comes from an opera from Bellini or so. Uh, so this idea of continuum and um, and between the present and the past. So not only between living and the dead, but the present time and the past and how the past is becoming the present, how, how our present is the future. So some kind of historical and then temporal and, and all these passages or, or, or parallelities or coexistences. I was interested, so then the, the, I was thinking like, yeah, what kind of text and how, and how the text could be more more immediate, you know, not some kind of... So I, I, I started uh, discussing with the person I, I, I work with, um, sometimes for dramaturgy, but mainly for organization, but who comes more from literature than from dance. And, and we were discussing and, and, and pointing out some kind of regions, some kind of emotions or some kind of stories. And, uh, and we tried to... And we just wrote those short fragments or, or 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 sometimes you know just naming naming certain bones in the body or or in relationship to this idea or genre of the danse macabre like what if the no that actually that was uh, with an idea of uh, or working with an idea of uh, anthropologist from Sicily who uh, describes how actually families I mean Apparently, you know, in Sicily, these catacombs and everything is already only for tourists, like they are fed up with it, or it's not, it's not necessarily something they carry on. Um, but it remained quite a, a long time, this idea of in case, you know, the, the dead would come back so that they have food, some, something they can, they can take. So you know, we, we took some threads or some traces and uh, and then there is the first text is like this, like it's an imitation for those to come back. That is also an imitation for maybe for the spectators to come back, who knows? It's an imitation to, to dance, basically. Like if you 
if you want to dance, you can you can do it. We we are going to sleep, or we will be asleep. Um, so that is really in relationship to the let's say to the to the genre of the, of the piece, and then other to the bones, like my visit to the catacombs and how much, you know, the first it was the they were the monks who got uh, mummified, and of course later the bourgeois and. You know, you fi also find women, but basically far back and only lie laying, you know, not standing. And then little girls even further back. And then after you find bones, you know, that are not anymore forming skeletons. So, yeah, the, the, the bones, even if you don't know all your, the name of all your bones, there are some bones we can recognize. So it was a little bit hard to how to create a sensation, you know, for, for all of you or those li to, who listen, this, that is not only there uh, for the dancers, but, yeah, this is somehow uh, your physical reality. And um, other texts came uh, from, uh, yeah, about, you know, a moment of dying, but before there is the, this idea of the fish, fisherman, probably something is there, but I don't know, through cinema, I've been quite a lot to, to Sicily, but I still have another, an, I have Sicilies, you know, in my mind or in my body, because there's Pasolini films or the Taviani brothers or others, and there is that Sicily, there is also many other ones, for myself even, so how... Yeah, so the fisherman and how the fisherman, you know, dies and how they go out and they will, there is a storm and they die. I mean, it's a super simple story, you know, that can maybe open up um, something. It's not a concrete story. It's not something we read in the newspapers or in a, uh, in a novel. It's um, some kind of... Um, that we, Kind of, I work a lot on this this concept of rehallucinating things. So reingurgitating. So when we know facts or or things, even local histories, but not necessarily to retell them the same way, but to op open them up and maybe only use some traces, some fragments of them. And there was this connections between how. Someone lose a, a person, and this even this desire to become like the person, like qu queering oneself, but actually, like, even become uh, like, uh, look like the other person, you know, wearing the clothes and arranging the hair and some kind of what what we also do a lot in life, how we friends or in between families or lovers or like. You know, we take a lot from others and then we don't anymore know <laughs> who starts where. And um, yes, this, this, what you told uh, about um, Isabel, yeah, this continuum also, continuation, communication, coexistence, this kind of things. And um, yes, or just drowning in the water. I have personally an experience, but it was almost 20 years ago. It's not my story. We, we just thought like it's also interesting to have almost the moment of dying, not only dying as in the past, like the dead, the deceased, but kind of the action of, of how, what is happening and what can, yeah. I was thinking about this, uh following this question about the texts, that all the texts that, um, if I'm not wrong, but almost all the texts that are in the piece, um, they are addressed to someone. It's like, you know, uh, the voice is uh, being that um, way of connecting different bodies. So this acousmatic body that you were talking about when, when singing is also present somehow in the recite of the text because some of them are yeah like offerings like saying no you have here the food just in case you come back so it's like you no know, i'm talking to you 
So like when you are talking to an absence, but you know, with the potential of a presence. And then there is the, um, the description of the bones, which is directly uh, related to, we don't know who, but it could be the spectator in the sense of this producing this empathy, this physical empathy, like, you know, this, um, yeah, this break of the fourth wall. And then there is the letters, like like this kind of you no know, of letters of uh, some of them are describing like memories the parts. So there is all the time this this offer this you no know, this ofrenda or this um, offering of of the possibility to to be to be together some somewhere in the middle of all these strange bodies no and I think singing coming back to singing, which is also very uh, present in many of your works in many different ways, like using the voice, I mean the voice as a tuning uh, tool, the, the body as a tuning tuning tool of uh, through voice, but also the voice as, as the, the, yeah, the, the sound that the voice by vibrating makes in the body as somehow it seems that is um, under underdrawing the the contours of the body, so um, escaping from these uh, limits of anatomy and producing other kind of uh, vibration amongst the beings or the bodies or resonating or you no. Know? Uh, I was thinking about all this and I, I just um, noted this um, uh, how sound comes like the there is the sea the sound of the sea, very strong at the beginning and at the end. There is the singing, there is the breathing, then there is the singing but with choirs, so it's plural. And then there is the singing crying, which is mm, like this figure of plañideras, in a very, it's very traditional, this figure in, in, in Spain, and I guess in many other cultures, which is the these uh, people that are somehow um, Asked to cry for the for that body. So the crying as a as an coming back to the sea is this no this water coming, this cleaning, this kind of you know salt <laughs> salt coming in like as a, as a shower of of, of salt no? because sea and crying have this common thing of the salt. So um, I was thinking about this through sound actually how it is constructed as a journey that you invite us to do through, through sound that passes like from the sound system to the bodies, then to, no, to tradition, then to, mm -hmm. uh, this is, I was commenting this uh, related to the, uh, following the text, because the text is, um, uh, is text, of course, is written and is elaborating with Elodie. But it's also said, it's, it's voice. It appears as voice. I think because of the, uh, we wanted to subtitle the film, and um, as the, this is the first time this film is shown, so because the, the piece actually you will, you will perform it, they will perform it in uh, next uh, 11, 12, and 13th in Vienna. But the film is, is not yet finished. This is not the last, last version. So they have been working a lot until last night. And um, we wanted to subtitle it, but uh, at the end we, we didn't get to, to have the files to do this. But somehow I'm glad about that because so we don't have the image of the, let, of the words here and we can go into sound. Thank you to the translators that ha did this great job of translating life of, of you know, Dublin, Dublin life, so it goes according to the fact of sound that is so present in the piece. Yes, this is complicated, I mean, because we, as I answered your question, like we had to, yeah, we rewritten re re the text and then we had to record it in order not to project it and, it, and the performance was taking place in France. So, uh, we understood that we have to rec record it in French, and now we did the recording in English. So <laughs> it seems we will need to go on and record, yeah, with different languages because different voices, <laughs> different voices because it's um, 
yes, I think subtitling is not mm -hmm. is with this piece and with the type of light, the darkness, with the mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's not. Um, it will interfere the image for yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, also the the, vo uh, the sound. I mean, it's not just to apologize or something, but. Uh, yes, I, uh, I I hear now again. Like there is still a lot of work in in with the sound mix. Um, yeah, there. Uh, all, all, the water being always that loud was not all, was it was not always the idea. So we have to still um, work on that quite a lot. But beside that, uh, I mean to articulate the different le levels at different moments. But uh, yes, it's constructed itself. Uh, we worked a lot with the breath, and, uh, and and then the sea came later, and then other moments of breath that is a bit, um, yeah, digitally um, re-hallucinated, let's say, came also later, and then the text came later, and and then. The, um, yeah, after the choice of the songs, uh, we tried um, different ways of dealing with them. Yes, between the choir of the eight um, performers and and the solo voice and and double and double double duos and yes and echoes and different ways to to collaborate on it and or breathe under or or making a song we call it a carpet work a lot with um, which is at the very end of the piece and the very beginning but, but which is cut now for this video some kind of very homeopathic memory of the of a, of, of a song or a the wind of a song, or a, yeah, a memory, maybe. Um, but that is there for quite a lot of time. That you know, that is mm -hmm. is carrying mm -hmm. some ta somehow the, the the dancers. And I think this was an idea. Yeah, how the singing or the breathing or the voices is driving them or how they are driving the singing and mm -hmm. um, yeah find um, an ecology um, yeah through that mm -hmm. ok bueno ya estamos llegando a la hora yo creo que hemos tenido suficiente y así que um, we will finish here and uh, we have still time to go to the terrace if we want. Podemos subir un ratito a la terraza si queréis antes de vernos mañana. Darte las gracias, Esther. Muchísimas Thank you for thank inviting you me. Thank you for staying. And thank you. Thank you.